Egyptian art The ancient Egyptian art form evolved over 5,000 years ago with the emergence of the early Egyptian civilization along the Nile River Valley, and remained relatively unchanged for the next three millennia. Egyptian art had a number of strict conventions for representing the human body that makes the style immediately recognizable to even the most untrained eye. Men are traditionally shown in white linen cloths and women in short-sleeved linen dresses. There were some slight changes in dress, as new fashions became widespread, but most were just variations upon this singular theme. The musculature and joints such as the knees are drawn well most likely due to the Egyptians' knowledge of anatomy gleaned through mummification practices. Yet, the pictures give a distorted representation of the body. Almost without exception the head is drawn in profile by a strict outline at a perfect 90 degree angle to its friendly pose broad shoulders. The eyes, wide open and looking forward are drawn facing the painter and detailed in full. The torso is at three quarters view, but legs and arms are again in profile and depicted one in front of the other, clearly demonstrating motion. Outlined from the big toe upwards, feet are both painted from the inside, so that the figure appears to have two same feet. It was through paintings that the ancient Egyptian artists expressed their intentions. They had very keen eyes for detail and like a botanist, who describes every single part of a flower, the artists were attentive in describing their subjects. Symbolism is apparent not only in the depictions of the individuals but also in the colors and animals. People drawn with big eyes and broad foreheads stood for sagacity and the images of a pharaoh holding a mace was symbolic of the king's role in protecting Egypt from chaos even though few ever went into battle. The use of blue or green emblematize the Nile, and yellow the Sunday numerous animals adorn many of the pictures found, and are drawn with scrupulous scrutiny into detail. Those which delineate pharaohs include renderings of falcons often hovering over their heads with outstretched wings. Since the most important aspect of these paintings is that they were often meant to be an accompaniment for the deceased in the other world, the artist's primary goal was to preserve everything of the present time as permanently as possible. One constant between all the paintings is that unitary exactness was stressed over cosmetic representation, but the meticulous homeometric regularity of figures did not filter over into perspective. In order to display distance, objects farther away were placed in the upper section or were painted over. Artists conservatively prepared walls for paintings by marking red horizontal and vertical guidelines and built specific grid patterns for standing figures arranging homogeneous bodily features for each symbolized individual with great emphasis on proportion. Murals like Egyptian society as a whole, were characterized by their sense of order and harmonic bonds. Scenes set on baselines depict events in chronological sequence, from right to left, focusing on one central character in the story, usually the tomb owner, a god or a king. In addition, since artists were charged with reinforcing social hierarchy, they were forced to draw figures in approximate sizes based not on their perceived distance from the observer, but on their relative importance. The pharaoh, for instance, is illustrated as the largest figure in the painting regardless of where he or she is situated. A lesser god is drawn smaller than a greater god. Wives and commoners are portrayed diminutively towering only over children and some animals. As a result, artists painted an extraordinarily vivid view of life in ancient Egypt, confined by inexorable categorization of people based on social class and persistent laws of artistic presentation.